Now, the Hamas terror attack on Israel has unleashed chaos and crisis in the Western democracies. There was a French teacher who was stabbed by an, Israeli, by, by an Islamist jihadi. There were two Swedish nationals who were shot dead in a hate crime in Sweden. There have been worldwide demonstrations of people supporting the Hamas terrorists, raising Hamas flags and chanting death to the Jews. A professor from Cornell University has described the Hamas butchery as exhilarating and energizing. The Hamas supporters have also been seen pulling down the Israeli flags in England's Sheffield Hall. Now, the world-renowned Harvard University has even refused to condemn the Hamas carnage on display on the 7th of October. This vocism of the pseudo-liberals of the West is downright outrageous, deploring and shocking. Now, one shudders to think that these well-educated elitists would rather sit and watch in silence the massacres, rapes and pillage and mutilation of innocents at the hands of the Hamas terrorists. And why does their heart not bleed for the innocence and why is it that they are selectively compassionate towards the deaths and the attacks that take place in various parts of the world. Now, the question is, have they sold their humanity to the highest bidder or is it simply a stand they would like to take just to stand out? But a big, bigger, even more concerning matter at hand is that how are the countries going to manage this pro-Hamas surge that is surging in the West? Is the West equipped enough to handle it? Firing of the 5,000 rockets by Hamas into Israel has caused a massive governance issue across the global West. Is there a solution? Let's start off this discussion. Patikrit of the telecast with me. Patikrit, the first question, there are several of these instances that have happened in the last one week. In fact, more than that, 6th, 7th October is when the attack took place. There have been rallies, demonstrations, protests across the globe in Canada, in UK, in US and other parts, uh, you know, with chanting these slogans, death to the Jews, kill the Jews, uh, Hamas flags being unfurled and, and, and chanting happening. And, and there have been recent attacks, fatal attacks on a teacher in France. There have been two sweats that have been killed. Uh, there has been condemnation that has come out against the, against the Harvard University, the elite, world-renowned Harvard University, saying that uh, it has not even gone out and condemned this ter terrible carnage, the brutality, the barbarity of the Hamas terrorists on the innocents in, in Israel. So, a, what world are we living in? And, and, and this is being witnessed only in the West or the Islamic nations. Uh, in such a scenario, is, is the West really geared up? Is it equipped enough in case there was, a, there was an Islamist riot that took place? Mega, good afternoon. No, I don't think the West is uh, prepared. And let me tell you, my worst fear is that in the next few weeks or months, uh, Western Europe might see a series of major terror attacks. There are uh, very high terror alerts going on in several cities. You have seen lone wolf attacks which is going on. And still the likes of Harvard will continue to have their own predisposed notions and will try to bring out justifications. They will try to, uh, you know, lecture on the root cause, but they will not uh, look into the fact that there are terror organizations and there are sympathizers of those terror organizations, which will keep on looking for a pretext uh, for waging what they believe is the righteous war as for their perspective. See, I don't think there is, a, it takes too much to condemn a terror organization and its brutality and at the same time have sympathy for the victims, whether it is in Palestine or whether it is in Israel. I mean, look at the stand that India has taken. I think it's a very righteous and a very pragmatic stand. And let me tell you, you know, I was seeing some of the pictures in the morning of the victims who were in that hospital. We are not yet you know, there's no clarity as to who has been responsible. But there are, there are children who are who have suffered, there are trauma in their faces. I see no difference between the, you know, the, 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 the suffering of the victims, whether it, the children, whether they are in Palestine, or whether those who suffered last week in Israel. But when it comes to issue of terrorism, Hamas is a brutal terror organization, and it has to be dealt in a way ISIS was dealt with. So neither the West is, uh, you know, prepared to do with because in the name of wokeism, they allowed an unbridled entry of all kinds of people in the name of allowing immigration from the Middle East 
and North Africa. So you had victims of terrorism, perpetrators of terrorism, and active supporters of terrorism all coming in. And neither they are prepared nor Harvard knows what to do because Harvard, as you rightly said, whether they have sold their morality for the highest bidder. I think this Harvard today is a classic example, mega of cultural Marxism. Where they have predisposed nation and notions as to who is a victim and who is a perpetrator, and if you look at what was going on in probably more than a decade back, when an effort was made to bring out a law that any time there's a riot attack happens or anything happens, the majority community will be considered as as a perpetrator, and the minority community, one particular community, will be considered as victim. Yeah. In this case, it is always presumed that Israel is the perpetrator. So remember one thing, you know, even if an opportunity is given that you know Israel agrees to the two-state theory, Hamas will not agree to this. Hamas would still want the whole state of Israel to be destroyed. Hamas would want all Jews to be killed. And we must understand and remember in 2015-2017, Fatah, which is the political wing of Palestine Liberation Organization. Fatah, which is ruling West Bank, imposed sanctions on Hamas. And that is the level of disdain they have for Hamas. In spite of that, right. Harvard would not say something. Right, it absolutely. You know, you know, there's more information pouring in. This is concerning. This is, this is uh, the, the point that I was mentioning. Is the West equipped enough to handle this governance crisis? And what has happened is that six French airports have been evacuated now. This is after there are threats of attacks that have been issued. Now, these evacuations are taking place in Lille, in Lyon, in Nantes, in Nantes, in Nice, and in, in Toulouse and Beauvais airports near Paris. Uh, again, the same question, uh, Colonel Sodi. The situation is becoming grimmer by the day. These uh, lone wolf attacks where ISIS is claiming responsibility, where this Islamist jihadists are roaming free, killing people, shooting them at sight, stabbing them. There are threats that are being issued. Uh, is France, America, UK, Canada, are they equipped to handle it? What if this, this, is, this also already seems like it is going to spiral out of control? Uh, is there a mechanism in place? Jain Mega, it's my honor to be on a news channel and a privilege to be with the esteemed core panelist. We have seen in the last few days the protests against the Israeli actions are on the increase in the uh, developed countries. Developing countries like the third world countries is understandable, but not in the developed countries, you know, where uh, it was always thought that there's almost 100% support for the Israelis. This is because of the unbridled check of the immigrants, which France and the other developed countries allowed in the last few decades. The reasons of which are best known to them but the fact remains that today they are becoming the biggest threat from the soil within. The only way to end this conflict is that the three major global geo geopolitical powers, that is USA, Russia and China, should interfere and ensure that the two nation settlement given out by the United Nations Resolution of 29 November 1947 is implemented and whatever objections both the uh, warring nations have, Palestine and Israel, they should be made to sit across. Mega today, with Iran just two weeks away from acquiring a nuclear bomb, the Middle East is the next global nuclear flashpoint. Okay. Professor Nalapat, uh, you know, I have to put this out in context and I would like to repeat it again. I spoke it just a while ago and there is a Cornell University professor. He's participating in a Hamas rally and it is taking place. Uh, Okay, and, and what, what he goes about saying is that it was exhilarating and energizing to see the Hamas terrorists killing, butchering, raping innocents in Israel. Now, if that's the attitude of the educated, elitist works, how is a US or a UK or a France equipped to fight out this surge of pro-Hamas protesters, rioters, demonstrators that are, that are wreaking havoc in these countries now? Well, Vega, I think the fact is that uh, the Israeli Defense Forces have the determination to press ahead. And yes, the Colonel made a very valuable suggestion. But the problem is Russia and China are on one side. They're on the side of Hamas. And the US is on the side of Israel. And 
frankly, Hamas and Israel cannot come together for the simple reason that Hamas does not recognize the right of Israel to exist. If you look at the Hamas charter, they don't recognize the right of Jewish people to be, to be there at all. That uh, the entire charter is anti-Jewish and very, very clearly states that the destruction of the state of Israel is the priority of Hamas. That being the case, a meeting point doesn't seem very likely. Uh, in my view, the Hamas is making every effort to try and position itself as the Palestinian people. When the reality is, Hamas is a terrorist organization very different from the overall Palestinian people. You know, like for example, you have a handful of these extremists, you know, Gurpatwan Singh, Panun and all that. And they are trying to pose as though they are members of one of this most valiant Sikh community. And the colonel well knows they don't represent this glorious community at all. In the same way, Hamas does not represent the Palestinians, but they are trying to pretend that they do and make this into a conflict with the whole of uh, Palestine when the reality is what is happening inside Gaza. What you saw happening in Israel, the murder, the torture, the assault, the rape, all that has been happening inside Gaza to fellow Gazans, to fellow Palestinians by Hamas people. When Whenever there's anybody who's anti-Hamas, this is what is done to him or her or, or their families. So this is the horror that has been perpetrated on Gaza. And in my personal view, the idea will continue until it basically ensures that Hamas is, is eliminated. Uh, as a terror force. Okay. And I, you should yeah. remember the example of India. You know, in the past, past governments, whenever they were close to success, they would always say, all right, let's withdraw now. And then again, these people would come back in full force. I don't think Israel would make that mistake. Uh, it's done that in the past. And if we take a, take a leaf out of the American book, and we take a look at how it has struck down ISIS and Al-Qaeda and the wars that have been perpetuated in Iraq and Syria are, are strong examples of uh, U.S. Continue to, continuing to move forward till the time there is, uh, uh, there is, there is uh, no locus standi of these terrorist organizations. So, so why not have the same action? Why not have... Uh, the same agenda and same propagation of what U.S. did to did to Iraq and Syria and the ISIS and the Al Qaeda and equate it to what is happening in Israel by the Hamas and 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 snuff them out uh, now that the opportunity strikes Israel. All right, uh, on the telecast with me is Rashmi Samant as well. Now, Rashmi, uh, uh, the situation and particularly since since you've studied from Oxford and you faced this tirade of wokeism, it's also pretty. Uh, apparent, very visible uh, uh, on the streets, on the streets of France, in UK, uh, in, in, in America. But, but uh, what is more shocking or is it lack of it? Was it expectant of Harvard University and its professors and Cornell University and its professors to, to speak their mind and, uh, uh, and, and, and you know, uh, glorify the Hamas terrorism that was witnessed on the streets of Israel? <coughs> I think there's a very clear reason why terrorism is on the rise. Today, we have more terror organizations than ever before. Why, you know, terror organizations like Hamas have the funding and the capability to continuously attack uh, the state of Israel. It's because they get the kind of intellectual cover fire and backing from other actors who are not necessarily the people pulling the, you know, trigger. But, you know, they form a part of the larger ecosystem which sustains it which makes sure that it grows and it, which makes sure that, you know, it comes across for a very, that, that it can sustain for a very long time. And I think for a very long time now, the professors, the students, or this entire ecosystem, as we'd like to call it, uh, was very well hidden. They were very, you know, smart in making diplomatic statements. They were smart in having this kind of, uh, you know, veiled existence having that kind of a, you know, veiled existence to their activities. But right now, I think the conditioning is so deep 
that even if they come out and put out their statements in public and even if they you know lend the intellectual cover fire in public it's not causing much damage you can see no one's out there condemning these professors no one is asking them to resign no one's asking them to be fired yeah. because they have succeeded in creating uh, that mindset not just within them and their followers but in the wider public through this sort of intellectual brainwashing through you know cultural marxism as one of the uh, co panelists here mentioned young people have been conditioned to think of a certain class as you know perpetrators of crimes and a certain class as the victims so it is clear in their heads and they don't want to look at facts of the day they don't want to look at how things are happening every time there's a conflict there it's it's assumed that one side is the oppressor and the other the victim and there's nothing you can do to actually change this this sort of thinking which is almost drilled into the young minds and that's what happens in these premier okay. institutions i've seen okay. it happen at oxford as well okay so i think that's the reason why we see this outpouring of support for hamas coming from premier institutions yeah. and now more than ever i think it we've reached a point wherein uh you know people are comfortable coming out and you know i i'd like to say that the kurd since i've risen uh previously it was harder to know people's allegiances but at least now the benefit is that we know who stands where mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that makes it easier to address the problem as a whole before yeah. they were rather careful with the sort of intellectual cover fire they provided you're absolutely right and i have to give the example of the hindutva terrorism uh, uh propaganda uh, you know fake propaganda that they continued to peddle in the past few months and these 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 this uh, peddling of fake propaganda against hindus came exactly from these institutions the oxfords and the harvards and the stanfords of the world who were being funded by these organizations and individuals for their for their vested political gains to build build a narrative against india for whatever reasons uh, that they wanted to achieve uh, patikrit again coming back to you and, and and this this report i would like to highlight again and this is exactly what i was making a point about in this discussion that there has been an evacuation siren that has been uh released there is a siren that has been released by the french government there are six of these airports which are close to paris that have been asked to evacuate there has been an email threat of an attack that has been issued and uh, if if countries uh, democracies uh were to act and shut down their railway systems and their roads and their streets and their airports the world will come to a standstill Uh, first of all mega uh, you know my first point is that we should stop looking towards western universities for wisdom uh, hence forth that's one number two uh, you know all critical infrastructures in western europe all major embassies all public places are under threat the problem with western europe is that in spite of knowing this they will not be able to do anything because there are these ghettos uh, you know these are like small gazas everywhere that is that they have created uh, there if they go to do any kind of preemptive strike Uh, uh, you know counter terror operation there will be riots there will be civil unrest and it is unfortunately the liberals will come up and you know defend that this should not have been done so i think uh, terror perpetrators also inspire each other what hamas did is will be an unfortunate in- inspiration for many other terror organizations that if they can do it in israel why can't we do it in europe that is the problem uh, but let's understand they will try everywhere it is much more difficult to do it in united states it is much easier to do it in western europe because eastern europe did not allow the demography change to happen they were very strict in not allowing the immigrants to come in unbridled and there were no checks and measures when they went to western europe my other point is that see i have a problem in, in you know justifying that americans you know did something right in iraq or syria that's not the case uh, they didn't do anything right and neither the isis was entirely defeated by the americans russians did have a role in that what the russian stand as of yet today is well we have to wait before we draw conclusions because when i saw russia tv for the last few days we saw that they were very neutral in terms of taking a stand they were showing the problems on both the sides i think we need to wait we must not forget that russia is an ally of iran but russia did face major terrorism in the past and it still has that threat from the central asian region so i think they will be balanced hopefully so china i don't know but as americans if it continues what is happening in ukraine in middle east and if something starts in taiwan how they will manage it 
how they will do it we don't know so i think every country now should be very careful about protection of their own people and civilian critical infrastructures because terror organizations will try to do wherever they can whatever they can in the name of avenging for Palestinian people, which is just a pretext, but they would have done it any case. Okay, it's a very, very difficult situation in Western Europe, particularly. Okay, uh, Colonel Sodi, uh, this uh, you know, uh, obviously, with regards to the kind of uh, Hamas versus Israel narratives is being peddled uh, by those who are uh, pro Hamas supporters, uh, they go about saying that this is. Uh, for the first time that Hamas has proved that Israel is uh, not inv invincible, invincible. They have gone about saying that the tides uh, have turned and, and that's, a, that's a very dangerous precedent to set. Mega, since 2007 when Hamas gained power in, in the Gaza Strip, this is the fifth attack by Israel on Hamas in, in the Gaza Strip. Each time after the attack, the Hamas has been suppressed for some time but they have come back much stronger because they have the support of China, Russia and the Islamic nations. The last major attack by Israel in the Gaza Strip was in 2014, when they could destroy only 5% of the 100 kilometers length of tunnels in the Gaza Strip. Today, the tunnels in the Gaza Strip are about 500 kilometers. So it is a much bigger challenge for uh, the Israeli defense forces. And yes, you are absolutely right. This one attack of Hamas on 7th October is warning bells for every country which is facing the threat of terrorism, including India. What Hamas did on 7th October would put many professional armies to shame. At 6.30 a.m. on 7th October, for 20 minutes, the entire electromagnetic spectrum of the Israeli Defense Forces was jammed, during which 5,000 rockets were fired at Israel and 1,000 Hamas terrorists entered up to 15 miles inside uh, the Israeli territory. Well, for a uh, good about 20 minutes, the Israeli Defense Forces did not come to know what has hit them. And this could not have been done by Hamas alone because their terrorists aren't that educated, aren't, aren't that tech savvy. It was surely the support of China. Yeah. Because China in 2014, in the PLM uh, military doctrine of 2014, it had announced that they are ready to fight a war with any nation in the world in all the six domains land, sea, air, cyber, electromagnetic spectrum and space. So today the nations which are facing this, uh, this terrorist threat need to be much more aware that what Hamas did to Israel on 7th October can be repeated by the other terrorist organizations against any country in any part of the world. Yeah. Professor Nalapat, uh, uh, whatever is happening, whether it is the vocus, the liberals, the pseudo-liberals going out supporting the pro-Hamas uh, terrorist attacks that took place. It is at the end the China uh, axis uh, with Russia and Iran, uh, Qatar, these are the countries that are benefiting from it all. There is no doubt the, uh, about it. And the fact of the matter is that the Chinese would like to drive the Americans away from the Middle East, from the Gulf countries. And the Chinese are now using this, uh, this war, which has come in very, very handy for them. And if you look at their linkages with Hamas, they are openly supporting Hamas. They are making no secret of the fact that their sympathies are with Hamas. So they are working very hard to ensure that any country that is friendly to America suffers. And Israel is very friendly to America. At the same time, they are trying to separate all the uh, uh, Arab countries from the United States and basically take their place as they have, you know, in, to some extent they are doing in Africa, in Asia and in some, in some parts of the world. They are trying to do it there. But I personally, in my view, I think that eventually you will see that the Israeli military will succeed. And the only point is we should not fall into a trap of identifying the great Palestinian community with the terrorists of Hamas. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, Israel also should be careful not to widen this war. And there are some Israeli ministers who are talking about fighting Iran, for example. I don't think that they should do that. I think I don't think Iran has much of a, an appetite to get into this conflict. I don't think, frankly, in Lebanon, there are you know, any, any groups that want to get into this conflict. And it's very important 
not to fall into the trap of dragging them into conflict. Okay. What Hamas wants is to see other countries jump in so that Hamas escapes the brunt of Israeli fire and the brunt of attention of the rest of the world. That should not be allowed. Rashmi, uh, again, the brunt at this point of time of the Hamas terrorist attack and the support it is getting across the globe is being, is being faced by the Western forces, the Western democracies. Now, uh, amidst the war, if it were to further escalate, uh, which are the countries that are going to suffer the most? All right, I'm being told Rashmi is no longer with me on the telecast. But uh, all right, on that note, I, I am out of time. I thank all of you for your views. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.